are we already at episode number 10? Time goes by fast, huh? 130,000 views, emails from around the world, and the number one question I get asked is what? How did you convert to Islam? Well, it's a long story, so I'll give you the short version of it. Here it goes. Before Islam, I used to hang around with people who were into really bad stuff. I mean, really bad stuff. When I come to think of it, I didn't have the best choice of friends. Man, these guys are a bunch of characters. Here are some of the characters I remember. The con artist. Hey, Ali, how's it going, baby? How's it going? I want to ask you a quick question. That book you have in your hand, uh, how much did you buy that for? $25. Not bad, not bad. I can sell it for 30. Yes, 30. And I'll give you 15. Huh? We got a deal? Come on! Oh, okay, I'll give you 20. The crazy guy. What? The trash talker. So he came up to me, I was like, dude, what are you talking about, man? What are you talking about? If you got something to say, say it in my face. And he was like, he just looked at me like I was crazy. And I told him, man, you know what? What? Is he behind me? Is he behind me? Oh, okay. Anyways, I told him, um, what did I tell him? The weird guy. So what you doing today? I don't know. I guess. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you want some? You sure? Okay. The thief. What's going on, man? Everything cool? You cool? All right. Once I get those credit card numbers, I'll be in business. <laughs> I'll be in business, you know what I'm saying? So one day, one of my best friends, which was also one of the worst friends, asked me to come play basketball with him in a Muslim basketball tournament. A Muslim basketball tournament. So I asked him, cool, who do we know that's Muslim? He tells me he's Muslim. You're Muslim? <laughs> Mr. Illegal? Mr. I just got arrested? Mr. Let me teach you how to cheat in school? Mr. Hey, look at that girl over there? <laughs> You're Muslim? You're Muslim? <laughs> what? You serious? Okay. I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Okay. It's out of me. <laughs> You're not Muslim. Who are you kidding, man? <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So on the other term, I go to his house and all the teammates are meeting up there. But they're wearing hats to say the word Allah on it and the word Islam on it. I'm like, what? How could this be? I see these guys at school all the time. I have like no idea these guys are Muslim. Zero. With all the stuff I see these people do, I didn't think they had any association with any religion. So we went to the tournament and when it came for a time for prayer, my team walked out. Yes, they said, let's go chill outside. I'm like, chill? Don't you guys go pray like five times a day? No, man, it's cool. We're gonna go chill outside. And judging by their actions, I thought Islam was some type of cultural thing. So, of course, after seeing the way these people were Muslims, I had no interest in looking into Islam. Did I become Muslim after seeing these guys? <laughs> no. As time went on, I noticed more and more of my friends were getting me into trouble. I guess this is what happens when you have bad friends around you. Sometimes you don't want to look for trouble, but trouble seems to find you. One guy got arrested, the other one's in trial, and bam, I get shot at. Twice. And what religion am I practicing? Nothing. I was worshipping idols. Worshipping idols. Wearing these superstition rocks around my neck, thinking that these rocks would benefit me somehow. But they didn't. I was lost in a world of Jahaliyyah, a world of ignorance. Islam was never given to me, so I had no idea what it was. Eventually, I realized that these idols didn't benefit me. So one day, I decided to search for the truth. I told myself if I find it, I will change my life. So I started looking into different religions and different ways of life. One by one, I found errors in different religions. Each time I found an error in a religion, I would throw it out. I mean, if the religion is from the creator of all things, the one who made everything, from God the Almighty, how can I have an error in it? Or how can I accept a message that's been changed by man? Or how can God get killed or die? I didn't buy it. 
or blind following some clergy guy? Someone who claims he's closer to God than the rest of us? I don't think so. Pretty soon, I started losing hope. It looked like all the religions were eliminated. Then one day, someone gives me a flyer to an Islamic camp. So I figured this would be a great time to check out the religion of Islam. Unfortunately, it was bad timing. You see, my father was in the hospital and the doctor told us he has about a few days to live. So my mother tells me we should stay here because this is the last time you'll probably see your father. So at first, I decided to stay. And then, suddenly, I don't know what happened, I changed my mind. I figured there was only one religion left. I had to check out what this Islam is. So against my family's will, I decided to go. So I took my purple-haired girlfriend and we went to the Islamic camp. Purple-haired girlfriend? Dude, I told you I was lost. Anyways, when I got to the camp, I was causing a lot of problems. Let's say I was just a big troublemaker and they wanted to kick me out. Yeah, I was pretty bad. And eventually I got so tired of causing trouble, I took a break and I sat down. I actually started listening to the lecture. It sounded very interesting. The speaker was talking about things I never heard before. I started evaluating, analyzing, questioning. And for the first time in my life, I started thinking, thinking. It was amazing. It all made sense. I told myself, if I ever find the truth, I will go after it. In less than 24 hours, I became Muslim. I told my longtime girlfriend, it's over. She was in shock. When I came home, I told my parents, I became Muslim. They were in shock. And when I told my friends I'm Muslim, I think they probably thought I went crazy. Crazy! I think the reason that the camp made such a difference is it isolated me from all the distractions you get in this life. You see, in our normal life, we're distracted with so many different things. But if you take all these distractions away and you get a chance to actually think and Islam is presented to you, it makes perfect sense. Do you ever wonder why so many prisoners become Muslim? All the distractions are gone. They have nothing to do except to think. So they think. So I come back and everyone thinks I'm crazy. How come they didn't think I was crazy when I was worshipping rocks? You see, I don't get that. Alhamdulillah, I've been Muslim ever since. Alhamdulillah. Now look at the difference between the two types of Muslims I met. The ones I went to high school with were nothing but a bunch of characters. The ones I met at the camp were practicing Muslims. You see, both types of Muslims had an effect on me. But only one had a positive effect. The other had a negative effect. You see, when Islam was presented correctly to me, I became Muslim the next day. So if you call yourself Muslim, and you imitate the misguided people around you, why would anyone want to be like you? I mean, if you go have a beer with your friends, and then you try to talk to them about how great Islam is, don't think you're a hypocrite. You see, there's people out there that are just like me. They are sincere, they want the truth, but they just need someone to present it to them. SubhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give you Islam. It's the greatest gift you can get in your life. And if you throw that away so you can imitate the misguided people, how does that make sense? I mentioned two types of Muslims. It's up to you to decide which one you want to be. Yeah, one path is going to be tougher than the other. But the end result is worth it. As you know, there's no compulsion in Islam. So the way we carry ourselves is the way we carry Islam to the people. SubhanAllah, those who had Islam and decided to be bad examples around me and never gave me Islam, what are they going to say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on Day of Judgment? Instead of giving me Islam, they gave me nothing. You see, if you slack off in your religion, it doesn't just affect you, but it also affects everyone who interacts with you. Do you know what I'm saying? No, seriously, do you know what I'm saying? I hope you do, inshallah. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot. What? <laughs> That's it. That's the last episode. Ten episodes, we finished, alhamdulillah, and season one is finished. I hope to come back for season number two, inshallah. I hope you come back for season number two, inshallah. And I have plenty of ideas. It's just a matter of putting the time aside to do them, inshallah. Please go to ummafilms.com. Go to the very top of the blog. It's, there's a field that says enter your email. Type in your email. Press enter. Add yourself to our list, inshallah. So every time a post comes out, you'll be notified when the second season comes out, you inshallah, you'll also be notified and that way, uh, right when it comes out, you're back, inshallah. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed it. I hope you benefited from it and not just were entertained by it. Jazakallah khair for watching, for letting others know, for your emails, and for all your comments. Assalamu alaikum. This is Ali reminding you just in case you forgot.